What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Uh, this is part two of the very messed up origin account. So basically, the motherfucker like be reading, be reading, uh, reads the books in the movie and kind like combines them into one. The first one was pretty cool, so you know we're watching the second one. Alright, cool. Alright, cool. A lot of juicy info in this episode that's gonna make your next time viewing the movie even better. So make sure you. Yeah, I'm not watching this shit again. I mean, I did. I just though, watched I the recap. So I'm not watching this. For sponsoring this up. Yeah, that's a long ass ad. Hey, get your money, bro. I ain't, I ain't hating on no money, honestly. Enjoy. I really ain't. I just ain't finna watch it. So I want to start this episode off by addressing that's the, the glaring error I made in part one. Where for some oh. reason, I referred to the other mother as the Bedlam instead of her actual name, the Beldum. <sighs> It took approximately four seconds for someone to comment the correction, but at that point, it was too late for me to do anything about it. The video was already uploaded, and I spent the entire last third of it referring to her as the Bedlam, and I just Damn wasn't going to refilm all that. I'm not exactly sure <laughs> how I didn't realize my mistake, being that I've read the book twice now and seen the movie twice as many times in the Damn, past. you read a book twice? Man, who the fuck reads a book twice? Yo, if you read a book twice, like, honestly, respect, because I uh, fuck reading. <laughs> not like, I ain't going to talk shit. Like, you a nerd, but like, uh, like... Good shit, man. No, like, yeah, if you read, that's good. I mean, I don't know about reading Caroline, but, like, read books that, like, really, like, you know, like, real estate books. Read books that, like, make your ass smarter. Reading is good. I just, I don't read. Click to, bro, like, click to start blocking ads. Like, how, like, an ad to block ads? What the fuck? Like, see, like, I don't want to, you know, as a content creator, I don't want to do that shit, but, like, the fuck too like goddamn them bitches do be annoying me so i ain't gonna kill why trying to do a reaction video off the Beldum, who responded by locking her in a broom closet sized room behind a mirror Coraline tried feeling her way around the tiny room she was trapped in to assess her surroundings and in the process she discovered the ghosts of three children who were also stuck there the ghost children revealed the Beldum stole their hearts souls and lives when she sewed buttons into their eyes and left them there and they warned Coraline that she'll suffer the same fate if she doesn't escape she will take your life and all you are and all all you care is for and she will leave you with nothing but mist and fog she'll take your joy and one day you'll awake and your heart and soul will have gone a husk you'll be a wisp you'll be and a thing no more than a dream on waking or a memory of something forgotten sounds pretty goddamn terrifying doesn't it that shit didn't even rhyme trash ass freestyle into those wondering why I could do the better. eyes why did she sew buttons into their eyes well as the saying goes the eyes are the windows to the, to the soul, soul. Aren't they? Now, as scared as she was, there was nothing more Coraline could do like at white that buttons. moment, so she did her best to get comfortable in that tiny broom closet and went to sleep. At the start of the next chapter, the Beldum releases Coraline from her cell, saying she didn't want to do that to her, but the girl was being disrespectful. You might remember that in the movie, it's not the Beldum who lets her out, but instead the other version of Coraline's neighbor YB, who actually isn't in the book at all, but was added to the movie to stretch out the plot. While sitting in the kitchen with the Beldum, Coraline remembers something the cat told her earlier, that if she wants to save her parents, she should challenge the Beldum to a Yikes. game where they're the prize, because in the words of the Beldum herself, Every Everybody likes games. The two agree that if Coraline can find her parents and the souls of the Bell, yo, tell me why her voice sexy. She'll let though. everyone go. But if Whoa! We oh, we need to edit that shit out. Hey, 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 I said her voice, all right? Like, I know I'm not gonna edit that shit out. Hey, look, I said her voice, all right? Like, you know, the, the, the voice actor, she might be kind of, or maybe not, honestly. I don't. Let's forget about that. Right away. With a little help from the Adderstone, she found her first soul in the bottom of the toy box in her other bedroom. She then goes to the other Miss Spink and Forcible's theater, which was now empty and had dog bats hanging from the ceiling. And dog the second bats. Soul in the old who the fuck? Bro, who said, yo, this right here, this is a children's movie. Huh? Why the f what fucked up childhood did you have, this man? actually unfolds pretty similar to the Like, film. my shit was kind of like, yikes, but like, God, I would never think of doing this shit. ...a lot of the old lady's hands, and as soon as she does, she's attacked by a monstrous version of them, as well as the dog bats. But, she manages to make it out, okay? Some Medusa After stepping shit. out of Miss Spink and Forcibles, Coraline noticed the Beldum waiting for her outside, looking rather pissed. The Beldum congratulated her on finding two souls so quickly, then suggested she search the apartment in the front of the house. Coraline figured this was a trap, but agreed to it anyway, and the Beldum coughed up the key for her. You want to check out the front side of the apartment, Coraline? Okay. <laughs> there you go. 
You want it? After exploring the front of the house for a bit, she found a trap door that led down to a tiny crawl space. And in that crawl space, she found a big, fat, amorphous blob that oh. used to be her other father. At God. first, he tried to help the poor girl, the but the Beldum's power was too strong for him to resist, and he was forced to attack Coraline. The only reason she was able to escape was because she ripped out his butt and eyes so he couldn't see, then she quietly snuck up the stairs and closed the trap door. Those oh. familiar with the movie will remember this happening during Coraline's escape back to her world after the cat scratches out the Beldum's eyes and Coraline sneaks her way up the spider web. Also, this interaction with her other father was altered for the movie, so it happened in the Beldum's garden instead of the basement, and it ended with Coraline getting a soul from him instead of it just being a trap. Anyway, after escaping from that nightmare, Coraline went to the other Mr. Bobo's apartment in search for the third and final soul, and immediately after entering, she saw him through the darkness sitting at the other end of the room. She looked through the adder stone and saw the final soul glowing from inside Bobo's coat, and despite being terrified to approach him, she did so anyway, all the while ignoring all the false promises Bravery. Bobo was- Bravery. You remember the quote from the last video he made? That is brave. Or maybe not, because that's like the only option you got. Huh. Oh no. Thinking about Never mind. Caroline's wildest dreams coming true. But see, I pay attention. Man, I'm a I'm a smart motherfucker. If she stayed with the Beldum. Just as she pulled open. Wait, what? I'm lines, sorry. I just talked so over anyway. this motherfucker. All the while ignoring all the false promises Bobo was making about Coraline's wildest dreams coming true. If she stayed with the Beldum. Just as she pulled open Bobo's coat, dozens of rats came pouring out. And one of them was carrying the soul. She chased the rat out of the apartment, but she fell down the stairs hard. And when she sat up, she thought she lost it forever. The girl was devastated at first. <sighs> but when she looked over, she saw the rat's decapitated head sitting several inches away from the dragon ball that cat smiling at her smugly with the soul under its paw she thanked him put it in her pocket and now with the final soul being collected and the false world growing increasingly unstable Coraline entered the house with the cat damn I would not read 13 chapters now, of this shit I would have read it one chapter but that's besides the point the Coraline enters the house and finds the Beldum waiting for her looking more monstrous than ever she shows the witch she found all three souls then gives her guess for where her parents are just like the film Coraline knows they're in the snow globe but she guesses the corridor so the Beldum will be distracted while she sneakily takes the snow globe herself then as soon as the Beldum turns back around Coraline throws her cat friend at the witch's face and runs through the door snatching the key on the way out with the help of the ghost, she's able to pull the door shut behind her, trapping the Beldum in the other world. Then she runs through the corridor back home. So either way, in the book and the movie, she just said, fuck kitty. <laughs> I mean, I guess she knew that the cat knew how to get through behind both, like through both worlds. But still, he basically like, yo, what was that name? I think, I think, uh, High Boy called him Dave. He just said Dave K, bro. It just dipped. Like, what? Oh. But this time, Gaiman goes right. through a lot of detail about what the passageway is like. He says Whatever. as Coraline's hand rubs against it, she feels fur, and it moves as if it's breathing. Then the next time she touches it, it feels hot and wet, as if she put her hand in somebody's mouth. Whatever that oh. was, it was older by far than the other mother. It was deep. How the fuck do you know how that feels? You just like, like, open wide, bit and just like, fist their mouth? Like, she just... She just knows how it feels to fist somebody's mouth. Whether it was deep, slow, and... <laughs> That's how they like it. Deep is slow. Slow, and it knew that she was there. Just imagine I'm sorry. being I'm in sorry. her shoes here. Escaping from the monster that threatened to steal your very soul for days that, on end, only for the final stretch home... That's to be my bad. I should have like not said that. Especially back to this video. This is like Caroline, you know? This is like a ch This is not a children's movie, first off. But, you know, I gotta do better. This is not a children's movie, though. ...paranormal entity. No thanks. Luckily, Coraline and the cat made it back to her world safely, and she was able to apologize for using him as a weapon. Then, yeah. as the girl stared out the window, she felt a new appreciation for the world she was once bored by, and fell asleep in the uncomfortable armchair in the drawing room. Chapter 12 opens with Coraline waking up to see her parents, her real parents, standing over her, and she learns they don't even remember being stuck in the snow globe. However, they both seem to be a bit more nurturing than they were prior to Coraline saving 
leaving them, so methinks the Belda may have been influencing them with some kind of spell. That night, she ate dinner with her folks, a weird kind of pizza that had green peppers, meatballs, and pineapple chunks on it. What's hilarious about that is Gaiman specifically says Coraline ate all of it except for the pineapple chunks. I guess he wanted to make it clear that she didn't go insane after spending too much time in the other world. Soon after dinner, Coraline went to bed and had she a dream where she was visited by the ghost children. Oh no, it's because motherfuckers say pineapple don't belong on pizza. <laughs> told her that her mission was not yet complete. You see, the Beldam swore by her right hand that she would play fairly, but she lied. To put it simply, when Coraline shut the door to the other world, she closed it on the Beldam's right hand, dismembering it. And the witch was determined to get that key. Coraline then came up with a plan to eradicate the hand for good, and she wasted no time putting it into action. She snuck out to the old well on the edge of her property, using a path that the hand couldn't follow her on, and moved the heavy wooden planks that were covering it. Then she set up what Imagine all this shit happened at your crib like she ain't she ain't like you know this is a whole ass adventure bro this <laughs> all this happened in the same square footage <laughs> like it's not even a lie you know what i'm saying like i don't give a shit if this shit's a mansion like it's still you know what i'm saying like they don't live in a mansion they're broke as shit so you imagine that like it's just all this shit happening in the same square footage in the uh, i don't know anyways this is like a whole fucking like Fable. Appeared to be a tea party for her dolls where she covered the well's opening with a paper tablecloth. Next, she went back to her house and told Miss Spink that she was going out to have a tea party. And she said it loud enough that the hand, which had been lingering around the property, could hear it. Then she took a more direct path back to the old well, this time watching the hand follow her in her peripheral vision. After arriving, Coraline needed to lure out the hand, so she put the key to the door in the center of the tablecloth which was weighed down just enough by the plastic dishes. Then, as Coraline intentionally turned her eyes away from the key, the hand leapt from a nearby tree and grabbed hold of it. This was all part of the plan, though, because the weight and momentum of the hand sent the plastic dishes flying up while the hand itself went tumbling down the well. Coraline finished her mission off by pulling the heavy planks back over the well's open. So, she's still fucking retarded in both the movie and the book. Opening, trapping the hand down there for good, and that night she fell asleep soundly in her real bed. Beyond the page? What? So that, Solo Cups, was the end of Coraline's original story. But that's not the end of this video. As discussed earlier, I want to go beyond the pages of the book to explore Neil Gaiman's motivation and inspiration for writing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously pretty f***ed up. And we, as the audience, deserve to know where those f***ed up ideas came from. His childhood, like, agree? So I don't know. So Gaiman started writing Coraline back in 1990 while living in England with his family. This may come as a bit of a shock, but Gaiman actually wrote this terrifying story for his five-year-old daughter, Holly, who was apparently a big fan of scary things. Gaiman didn't write the book all in one go though. He actually took a six year break when his family moved to America. And in his words, the reason he picked it back up was, I realized that if I didn't, my youngest daughter, Maddie, would be too old for it by the time I was done. I started it for Holly, I finished it for Maddie. Isn't that just the cutest thing? Now the house Coraline lived in, that was actually modeled off the house they were living in in England when he started the book. And the reason he did this was so that Holly would be able to imagine where everything was. There were of course a few changes here and there. Bro, that's kind of fucked up. Like, like imagine you should go to bed and you're like going to sleep in your bed and then you wake up and you're like, yo, like that corner right there, that's where that door would be. Like, bro, like, you know, if she's really young, she might be like, yo, is that shit true? Like, possibly, like, Maybe Pops wasn't just off a of perk, like, when he made his book. Like, maybe this shit's, like, for real. And then, like, she can't sleep at night. Like, I, I, hey, man. There, but the most important <laughs> detail, the door with the bricks behind it, that actually existed. And my, if my Pops wrote this book for me and, like, told me this shit while I was going to bed, like, in the same crib, I'd be like, are you for real? Like, what the fuck did I do to you? Like, are, are you, like, what? Why? What? House that I don't want this shit. Grew up in. And it was there to Why would you tell me that? To be the servant quarters where Gaiman lived from the part of the house that was for the family in charge. Another interesting bit is that the main character's name was originally going to be Caroline, but he made a typo writing Coraline instead, and he ended up liking that better. Funny how things work out like that, isn't it? Now when it comes to the Beldum, Gaiman has never specifically commented on what his inspiration for her was, but there is a theory that he was inspired by traditional fairy folklore and a poem written by John Keats in 1890. 
2019. That poem is called La Belle Dame Sans Merci, which literally translates to The Beautiful Woman Without Mercy. It follows a knight who just so happens to meet a beautiful woman in a meadow and falls deeply in love with her. But one evening, while staying with her, he's visited by the ghosts of past kings and princes who warn him that she's up to something and he's falling for it. The poem then ends oh, on a tragic note, with the knight being discarded by the Belle Dame and trapped in her world, which is revealed to have been a falsehood she created to lure him there. Sounds pretty similar, right? Granted, in the poem, she's after men instead of children, but Damn. the rest of it lines up pretty perfectly. From creating a world designed to lure her victims to her, to acting like she cares deeply about her victims in the beginning, and of course being visited by the ghosts of victims past. Just to reiterate, I can't actually find anything where Gaiman cites this poem or any other bit of folklore's inspiration. So, so how does he, like this... But personally, How does he I think it find that shit? Big that's crazy. Now, that's pretty dope. Fam, it's time for me to ask I mean, thoughts. probably somebody else already did that. Made that connection to on and based the internet. Based on what you heard, what version of Coraline do you like better, the book or the movie? Personally, I'm gonna say the book. Nah, fuck both.